Hi everybody, it's Dr. Bardot. I'm going to walk you through the love meter exercise uh, in our Arduino books. Uh, I'm hoping that this will take about 20 minutes, maybe less. Uh, and what I'm going to show you to, to do is how to uh, create this in Tinkercad. I'm going to code a little different than it is in the book, uh, but basically the same result and maybe simplified a little bit and maybe changed uh, the, the, the temperatures that the lights light up at to make it work better with Tinkercad. Um, so with that, we're gonna get started. It's good to look at the diagram over here. So we don't, we have four components that we want to utilize. We have three actuators, which are these three red LEDs, and one sensor, which is a temperature sensor. The lights are connected to pins two, three, and four and the temperature sensor is connected to pin A0 of our Arduino, sort of like the potentiometers that we uh, have seen previously. All right, so I'm gonna keep those things in mind. I'm going to, uh, I might come back to that later. I'll, I'll make a new circuit. I'll change the name to Lovometer. And it'd be good if you guys could put your names on, on your sketches, uh, just to distinguish them a little bit. Okay, I'll bring over an Arduino and rotate it to make it a little easier and, and more like what we saw on the page before. I got this breadboard and I'll rotate that and maybe slide it here. Every sketch that we do, we want to have um, uh, power and ground wires that go from 5 volts uh, and to ground. You don't have to change the colors of these, it's just sort of helpful. Okay, I'm going to put in the LEDs first. So I know I'm supposed to put uh, three LEDs near the bottom and I'm going to copy and paste these LEDs uh, to kind of make, they, when I copy and paste them, they um, they have the same orientation. And so that's a little faster. Uh, we're gonna need um, a um, resistor, which is connected to the cathode side and the, which connects the cathode of the LED to the ground side of our power. So I place that there. And of course, we want to change that to 220 ohms. So it should look red, red, brown. Then I'm going to copy and paste these as well, because I just want three of those. And then, as I said before, we want to connect our anode side to two, three, and four. So that's the wiring that we do for for um, uh, LEDs every time. Now I'm gonna put in some code here just to make sure that my uh, LEDs are working. So I'm gonna take some of the code that's in here um, and uh, utilize it just to make, to, to make sure. So I, I, for each light, we need to have a pin mode so I changed that to say pin mode two is output. Um, and I'm gonna copy that and paste and paste. So two, three, and four are outputs. Then I'm going to digital write two high and three low and four low. Then I'll have it wait for a second and turn off number two, turn on number three, keep off number four, then wait a second and uh, turn off number three and turn on number four. 
and wait a second. So this is just to make sure that my lights are working, that, that I've done my wiring well. Um, so I'll go ahead and start the simulation. So the first light lights up, then the second light lights up, then the third light, and it repeats. Everything is going the way I want. So I can get rid of all of this code. All right. So that's if I was really building this, this is what I would do to make sure that things were, were working the right way. So I've got my lights and they work. That's my first step. My next step is to look for the temperature sensor. It is not this one with an N. It looks a lot like that. It's the one that says TMP on the bottom here. And I need to rotate that 90 degrees and put it here. Now, we have to wire this up. And there are three kinds of wires. This is very common for a sensor. A sensor will have a power wire, which you will need to connect to our power rail. We often mark that with a red wire. It doesn't have to be red. We, most sensors will have a ground wire as well, which we often mark as black. And then it says V out. So what happens here is this component sends more and more electricity out through this V out pin, the hotter it gets. So we're going to connect that pin to A0, an analog in pin, an analog pin, so that we can measure um, the temperature. Okay, so let's write a little bit of code uh, to um, to test to see. So I've wired up my temperature sensor. Let's write a little bit of code to see if um, uh, I'm my temperature sensor is working. So to test if a sensor is working, you often have to uh, use the serial port. The way the communication between your home computer, your laptop, and your Arduino. Because um, uh, the, uh, the only thing that a sensor can do is just sort of tell you what it's reading. Uh, we should also say pin mode A0 is an input. Okay, and then we're going to serial, in the loop, we're going to serial print L, that's an L that you just saw there. This, this letter is an L, serial print LN, oh, we're not really ready for that, sorry. First thing we got to do is find out uh, what the temp sensor says. So we will analog read A0. And I'm going to put in a little uh, comment here that you don't have to put in. Uh, read the temp sensor. Okay. And now that I have picked a variable name for uh, what 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 number we're getting from the temp sensor, which I called temp sensor, we can print that out. Okay. Um, All right, so I'm going to start this simulation, and I'm going to look at my serial monitor by clicking down here. I can see I'm getting numbers in the 150s. Okay, I'm going to click on my temperature sensor, which right now says reading 25 degrees, and I'm going to turn it up and see if I get higher numbers in my serial monitor. So I've changed it to 76 Celsius, and I'm getting 260 now. So the answer is the more I push up this thing, the higher this, the serial monitor goes. So it seems to be working.
All right, so I've wired up my temperature sensor. I've wired up my lights. They work. Now I want them to work together, okay? So I'm going to go back into my code here and get them to work together. Now I got, I had a temperature of 25, but the thing spit out uh, like 125. So it's not giving me exactly the temperature. I need to use a little math to get that. The first thing I want to do is calculate the voltage. And the way I do that is I look at what fraction, uh, I want to find out how much voltage, how much power the electricity is coming out of the temperature sensor with. The maximum it could be is five volts because that's the maximum amount that we put in. So let's figure out what fraction it is. So it's the number that we get back from the temperature sensor with a parentheses in front divided by 1024.0. It's kind of important to put the uh, uh, point zero here because the voltage that we're going to get out is going to be a decimal and we want to tell the computer that we want to use decimals here. That's why I changed this word here from int to float. Float is a way of telling the computer that the number I'm going to be thinking about is a uh, is a number that can have decimal points. Um, uh, and so we take that fraction, that percentage, and we multiply it by the total it could possibly be, which is 5.0, and that um, gives us the uh, voltage that comes out of here. We can then, so normally when you buy a temperature sensor like this, you'll get a piece of paper called um, a data sheet, and on there it will have helpful formulas about how to turn the voltage that comes out of it into a temperature. So let's um, use that special formula, which I looked up, and what you do is you take the voltage, you subtract 0 0.5, and you multiply that by 100. That's going to tell you the Celsius temperature. Um, and if you want to turn that into Fahrenheit, you can look about the, for the formula about how to turn that into um, uh, Fahrenheit, uh, how to turn Celsius into Fahrenheit, and that's a formula, and you can put that in. We're not going to do that. So now we're going to basically create a uh, four different situations. Either the temperature is less than 20 degrees or the temperature is between 20 and 30 degrees or the temperature is between uh, 30 and 40 degrees, or the temperature is more than 40. So this is different from the last time we used an if statement. The last time we used a sta if statement was with the button, and either the button was pressed or it wasn't. This one, we have four different cases, so it's not going to be just if and else. It's going to be a little more complicated, okay? But it is going to have an if statement. So if the temperature is less than 20 degrees, what do we want to do? We are going to make every light be off. And so every beginning needs to have an ending. So I just began this group of what happens when it's uh, less than 20 degrees, and now I've ended that. Now I'm going to say else if. So I say else, and then another possibility. If the temperature is more than 20 degrees, well, let's say greater than or equal to, so that just in case we get that. And we want to say and here. And the way we say and is we use the ampersand symbol. That's uh, shift seven on my keyboard. Uh, and the temperature 
is less than 30 degrees. Then what are we going to do? Well, we are going to do almost the same thing we did last time. We are going to, um, so that's, that's this case here. Okay. Um, but instead of just having all of them off, we'll have the, the one at the bottom turn on. Okay. All right. So we've dealt with that case. And we've closed it up here. Now, else if, and you can hopefully kind of guess what's going to happen next, if the temperature is more than or equal to 30, and the temperature is less than 40, OK, very similar, OK? And we'll We'll copy what's up here, but not do exactly the same thing. We'll light up the first and the second lights. And then finally we could say else if, we could probably just say else here, but I like the idea of really showing people who read my code what the heck is going on here. So um, if it's more than 40, What am I going to do? I'm going to turn them all on. OK. So a lot of copying and pasting there. OK. And hopefully you can work through that. And hopefully this makes sense to you. Let's see how it works. Let's see, first of all, if it compiles. So I'm going to click Start. Oh, no errors. I can see the numbers coming out here. Um, I might throw one thing in just to make something. So as, I, as I, it gets hot, so I can see that the temperature is uh, 45, and they're all lit up. And I'm going to scroll it down. So at 37, only one's lit up. At 28, only the bottom one is lit up. And at 12, they're all off. This is kind of how I wanted it to work. Um, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to add something to my code. Rather than print out uh, what the temperature sensor is saying, I'm going to have it print out what the temperature is, what it thinks the temperature is. I can see on my sensor what it thinks the temperature is uh, in this simulation, and so it'd be nice to see if they match. Um, so I'll, I'm going to run this one more time. And I'm getting double things. So I'm going to stop uh, printing out what the temp sensor, sensor is saying by putting uh, some, a comment thing there. That's often a way that coders uh, take a line out that they might want to put back in later. So my temperature sensor is saying 25 degrees. My Arduino is saying 24.7. That's pretty good. I'm moving this around. I've changed it to 46. It's saying 46.68. Seems like the math is working out. All right. Good luck with this, and I'll be in. Uh, There'll be help for you in the uh, ID lab tonight if you need it or we can talk tomorrow. Good luck.